Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, today I have a couple of things that I want to talk about. Um, I want to show you a few of my most recent purchases, uh, which if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you probably would have seen. I got these two things last week and they are both tarot related. Um, and I also want to talk about one card from the Wooden Tarot that I drew last night and some of my experiences so far with the Wooden Tarot, um, who if some of you don't know is an independently produced deck um, I bought from the US, I actually got it as a gift for my birthday this year which was really lovely. Um, but I've just started looking and working with it seriously and I drew this card and I just feel compelled to share it with you. So, uh, first of all, let's get started with what I bought last week. So, I went on a bit of a tarot binge, um, like I haven't gotten new cards recently or anything, um, but I saw this deck and I've never heard of it before and I found it impossible to put down and I desperately, desperately had to have it. So this is the Tarot of the Sweet Twilight which, as I said, I've never heard of before. It's another Le Scarabio deck. What's with me in Le Scarabio? I don't know. I tend to love it. I don't know. I, I love the artworks that they do in their decks. I think that's it. Um, because this artwork is spectacular. It's like Dali slash Tim Burton. And I just thought, how, how can I not? How, how can I not? And then I read the little quote on top of the, the box, which is a part of a poem by W.B. Yeats, who was a romantic poet. And I thought, yeah, really, how can I not? So, uh, of course, I got it. I couldn't put it down, and I had to have it. So, um, I haven't opened this yet. It's still in its packaging, but I was sneaky, and I looked online and had a look at some of the imagery for both Major and Minor Arcana, and it blew me away. Um, I cannot wait to open this deck, but at the moment I have some other decks that I'm working with, or that I should be working with, uh, namely the Wooden Tarot, which is taking up most of my time and dedication at the moment um, before I open this bad boy. Um, so it's sitting where my unopened tarot decks usually sit, which is underneath my main altar, until the right time comes for me to open it. Uh, that being said, I have been going online and doing a bit of research about this deck and looking at its imagery, and it just makes me want to desperately, desperately open it. But I know that it's not the right time for me to really work with this deck yet. So that being said, I am going to move on to my other purchase, which is this massively wholesome tome, The Holistic Tarot by Benabel Wren. Wen, sorry. I always think Wren like the bird, you know, but no, it's not. Um, which I've just started reading a couple of nights ago and I'm already very, very intrigued and very hooked. and. Um, I've been considering actually as I go through the chapters and come up with my own conclusions maybe doing some videos on my channel um, taking you guys through the holistic tarot and my experiences as I read it um, if that's something you're interested in let me know please comment down below um, I would like to say one thing that really got me with this book when I was first starting to read it and as she's introducing tarot and tarot readers who um, she actually doesn't call tarot readers tarot readers or consider herself a tarot reader. She calls them tarot practitioners because in her view or from my understanding, tarot is an art and if you are, you know, you're either an artist or a practitioner of the arts, um, which I really quite liked and I've never considered calling myself a tarot practitioner before um, because I'm not really a sort of professional tarot reader yet. I'm not sure if I want to be. Um, and I just thought it was really, really interesting. And she talks about her method of, uh, well, what she talks about is tarot analytics, which is looking at the tarot as a guide for your uh, inner growth and well-being and tapping into collective unconscious and more about psychological sort of effects and um, benefits of using the tarot to re tap into your own subconscious and the collective subconscious or collective consciousness, uh, which is really awesome. So I'm going to go on a little tangent about this now because I just remember that I wanted to talk about something about collective unconscious. Um, I first heard of that term when I was studying 
art in high school. Um, I had a really good substitute teacher and she was talking about Picasso and Picasso and Brock and how they were essentially developing cubism into different parts of the world at the same time. And she attributed that to the collective unconscious that artists can tap into. And I thought that's really interesting because um, it is often that when you are doing your own work um, in tarot or in the arts, um, and you think you're totally alone in some idea and then you go to research it and you actually realize that you're not alone that a lot of people um, have similar ideas and I kind of attribute that to the collective unconscious and I just I think it's interesting that artists can tap into that um, I mean let me know please down below if you can tap into it and you're not an artist or consider yourself a creative person or even what your opinions are on the whole idea of a collective unconscious. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting into that and reading it and uh, doing the exercises and researching it too. Um, almost as much as I'm looking forward to opening the Tower of the Sweet Twilight. Um, which won't be for a while yet, because we all know I only unboxed the Vintage Wisdom Oracle and the Anne Stokes Gothic Tarot the other week. So, um, yeah, I've got, I've got, I'm, you know, I've got my hands full, really, with the tarot. Um, so, speaking of tarot, on to another thing. So, I, as I said, I've been working with the Wooden Tarot, which is a spectacularly marvellous deck. Um, I'm sure you've seen people's unboxings, maybe. I don't know if anyone's, had, if anyone's released a review yet. Could be because this deck is, like, notoriously tricky to work with. Not, not in a tricky, um, deceptive way, but in, in a challenging way. Like, it is really unusual in that sense. And it has a lot of very earthy, shamanistic kind of energy which if you're not used to tapping into that sort of stuff it's a bit harder to get a hold of um well at least from my point of view anyway so that's the backing of the wooden tarot which is spectacular uh i love all the imagery in this deck i'm not going to go through it now i'm going to save a review of this when i've actually worked with it properly um but i did pull this card last night and i thought that's something that, well, I mean, I want to start discussing certain interpretations of this card uh, and this card, how it's depicted in this deck, um, which is the King of Stones. Of course, my camera shows everything backwards because it's a crappy webcam, so I do apologise about that. So, uh, when I drew this card... Uh, I was drawing cards last night, uh, just uh, single one card readings, um, because, uh, you know, I want to develop a language with this deck, because it's quite unusual. Um, I thought, okay, King of Stones, you know, King of Fire Energy, Passion, the Sun, and then it kind of came to me of the connection between, like, uh, sun gods and because I have a bit of an affinity for the Egyptian pantheon of gods and I've worked with Isis um, in the past I immediately thought of Ra and then I thought well that's weird that kind of popped into my head randomly and also when I was working with this card last night and trying to figure out what it means to me and I was coming up with all these words and meanings and this card really taps into my unconscious but in a certain way that is very different for me um, and it'd be different for everyone I think. When I work with the Royal Dark Tarot I get drawn into a fantasy world. When I work with this deck I get drawn into a very ancestral ancient uh, sort of headspace pathway and I don't I don't really uh, think of the deck or tarot meanings as they've been prescribed by Rider Waite Smith or anything like that. Um, I think of them more as elemental so stones is fire, blooms is water, plumes is air um, and the other one is bones which is earth. And I, I kind of connect a bit more elementally with this deck, which has been really good, but also really uh, challenging because I don't normally go into that other headspace with my different tarot decks. 
So anyway, back with the King of Stones and talking about sun gods and stuff like that. Um, I, I immediately had, well not immediately, but as I was going to put this deck away, um, and I was thinking about all the words that I associated with it, you know, action, power, uh, determination, drive, passion, all those kinds of things came up to me. Um, there's a song by the sort of black metal, death metal band, but Behemoth, um, called Fura de Venus. And whenever I heard that title, even though this is not what it means, I always thought of Divine Fire. And that song came into my head just as I was putting these cards away, and I thought, Divine Fire, but it's kind of, I mean, that literal translation of that is actually Divine Fury, um, which, uh, I don't know if that so much ties into it, but it's my initial understanding of the words were to be Divine Fire. Anyway, and I thought of this and I thought of, um, you know, maybe how we can ignite that divine fire or passion within us all. You know how we have, like, especially here in the southern hemisphere where it's winter, um, a bit of a lull in our drive and passions and motivations for things. And um, drawing this card for me was really about talking about that lull and getting out of the rut of... Um, uh, sort of cooling down too much or hibernating too much in winter. Um, really about keeping your ideas and your motivations alive. You know, I don't really um, talk about tarot cards to other people and I don't really talk about how I use them in daily life. I mean, it actually did come up in my workplace the other day, which was quite funny um, and quite interesting because most people don't consider tarot to be tools as uh, of self-development, they consider it to be tools of fortune-telling or tricking people into giving you money so you can tell them potentially what their future is, which is not something that I believe in. Um, you know, if you come to me for a tarot reading, you're coming to me because you want help in a certain area or situation in your life, and maybe I can feed through some energies that or read it, the cards in a certain way that makes sense to you, that resonate with you, and will help you to make decisions and move on from that sort of aspect of your life. Um, so this King of Stones card kind of really, I don't know, just, just made me think about all of that stuff and made me think about igniting that divine fire or that passionate spark in me again. Um, because I have been experiencing a bit of a lull in my creative sense, um, I, I have been on holidays for the past three weeks, so it's kind of, you know, interesting because I haven't been doing any work. I, I've needed a break, but at the same time, you know, I, I need something to spark that creativity. And this deck kind of gives me that. So researching this deck, not researching, but looking into this deck and making my own meanings has really been getting my creative juices flowing and getting me to consider tarot in a different way, connecting with more elemental energies, connecting with the earth and bones and crystals and that kind of stuff. Um, so, to get onto a bit of a lighter topic, um, I'd like to show you the crystal that I use with this deck, uh, which is my giant hunk of rose quartz. I don't know if you can see that. It's quite light pink. I actually thought it was that somebody had um, missold me this and I got a chunk of Himalayan rock salt, but uh, <laughs> it's definitely rose quartz. Uh, I don't think it's prob it's probably not like a higher grade quality rose quartz. It's probably just dyed um, clear quartz even. But it has that symbology, that sort of uh, energy of unconditional love that I really like in rose quartz. Um, and I use this this stone with my um, wooden tarot. So, I mean, that's all I really wanted to share with you guys today. I wanted to show you my Tarot of Sweet Twilight, which I haven't opened yet. And when I do open it, I'll probably do another video on that. Um, and I wanted to show you my Holistic Tarot, which I'm probably going to start doing videos in a series of. Um, if that's something that you guys will be interested to see. Um, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers to my channel, and if you're watching this video for the first time, please check out my other videos. Um, I've got a review on the Royal Dark Tarot, uh, a long ramble on my unboxing, and also my introduction video, and I will 
hopefully be aiming to put videos on my channel every week. So um, please like, comment and subscribe if you liked watching this video and I uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!